I am going to introduce our speaker, David Lisenby. So David is an IT industry leader who excels at creating an environment for individuals and teams to succeed. His success is defined by the satisfaction of his customers, his team, and the ability to deliver profitable projects on time. David is a situational leader using the five Tuckman stages of team development to bring people together. He adds a calming and results oriented executive presence. So welcome David and I'm going to turn the time over to you to kick this off. Thank you Scott that was wonderful. I don't know who wrote that but thank him for me. In fact it might have been my wife it sounded so amazing. So let me introduce myself just a little bit. Um, first I'm, I'm just genuinely excited to be here. Uh, the idea of sharing information, gathering information is one of my five core principles and I, I enjoy being a part of this platform. Um, my background in addition to what Scott shared is uh, I'm a father of three, uh, married my high school sweetheart out of uh, Delta, Utah for those of you that are from rural Utah. Um, I have two of my children that are attending SUU right now and uh, loving it. Uh, we, we live in Hurricane, but we travel up to Cedar often for the mountain bike scene, uh, which some of you may be a part of. Uh, we were just there last Thursday enjoying some of the trails in Southview. Uh, in addition to that, one of the things that my wife and I decided about seven years ago was, um, how do we live a life that we can share with others? How do we live a life where we can find joy in the things that are already around us? And that's where we decided to embrace mountain biking and moved into coaching and ultimately creating a team here in Hurricane. So we are, my wife and I co-head uh, coach the Hurricane Flying Tigers, and uh, that's what we do for fun. So professionally, uh, as Scott mentioned, I've been in the industry almost 25 years. I was one of the lead engineers for the Salt Lake City Winter Olympics in 2002, and then I left the Olympics uh, primarily because it was time to settle down. We were beginning to have children, and, uh, and I took the position with NICE. Uh, NICE, up until about three years ago, was unheard of. Uh, they're based out of Israel, and, uh, and most, most people had never heard of NICE until three years ago when we acquired a company in Salt Lake Valley called In Contact. And so NICE In Contact has become um, a global presence for, for call uh, center technology and business intelligence, and that's where I sit. I sit within that that company today, and love doing it. I've been here uh, almost 20 years, a little less than 20 years, and uh, and have been in project management for roughly 15. So that's that's a little bit about me. I uh, also wanted to orient you a little bit on where I'm at and what I'm doing. So. You're seeing me as my team see me. You're seeing me as, um, you know, today I've been in meetings since 6 a.m. with this web camera on the entire time, and uh, this is my workspace. I've tried to create a space that I enjoy. Um, if I were to pan around, you would see a, a bike where I train on. You would see pictures from my daughter. This is my space, and I love, I love working here. So let's move on to some of the, the meeting guidelines. One is, um, I'd like to do this together. So let's get ready together by removing distractions. I've turned off everything from on my laptop. My phone's flipped over. Um, I've got a do not disturb sign on my, on my office door and, uh, and, and I'm ready to go. Uh, second, turning on our web cameras, which Scott invited you to do. Please do it. And there's two reasons. One is it, if there's any discomfort, this gives you the opportunity to gain some confidence and see that it's actually okay. Um, everyone in the world has different circumstances, different backgrounds, and different situations, and it's becoming more common to accept those. Uh, we're no longer in that environment of having a static work environment. Everyone has to be exactly the same, and so it's okay to share your workspace. And then participate. Uh, that's really the most important thing that I'd like to ask of you is to participate and share your thoughts. And so I have a few questions that I want to uh, first engage your mind with uh, around project management and keeping things moving forward. So I'm going to ask four questions and if one of these applies to you, raise your hand. 
Uh, one, have you been asked to do something that you just don't understand? Like you were tasked with a, a job, you were tasked with some kind of activity, and it's not very clear, right? I'm, I'm one of them. There's some ambiguity, maybe, maybe a misunderstanding, but there's, there's that, right? Or two, uh, you need help from somebody else, and you're not really getting it. I'm one of them. Do you, do you, have some, you just need help from somebody, and you're not getting that help? That's number two. All right, number three. Do you have, and this may not apply to everyone, but are you struggling to keep your project or whatever you were tasked with doing on track? Maybe there's a timeline. Maybe there's a budget. Maybe there's an expectation. Uh, I, I have one of those. So struggling to keep things on track. And then here's the last one. And it may have an emotional component to it because it often drives a little frustration. Are any of you being asked to deliver information all the time, randomly about things, and 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 the request might come out of the blue. You know, today at three o'clock, someone might come to you, see, come to you, and ask you for information about something that you felt like you already updated them on. That applies to me. So, if any of those four apply to you, then you're in the right place. This is where we talk about the the tool of project management, and I'll get into that in a little bit. So, now with those questions out of the way. Here's where I need you to write something down. Type it in your, on, your, on your machine or your, your computer, your phone, on a notepad, whatever you use. But what is your goal from this session? Uh, and I have five just kind of little brain teasers that might help. Are you here to learn something new? If so, write that down. If you're here to strengthen something that you may already know, that's okay too. Write that down. Uh, maybe you want to become a more, uh, more efficient employer uh, or employee. So that's number three. Write that one down if that's you. Uh, number four, maybe you want to partner better with others. They could be in the community. They could be business partners. They could be uh, coworkers. Maybe even your own employer or your, or your boss. You just want to partner better with somebody. Or are you here to get a certificate? I hope that's not the only reason you're here, but that's, a, that's an okay outcome, right? It can remind you of what you're doing to learn. So my success criteria, right, my goal is this. I have two of them. One is that you each leave with one way that you can use this session to make life better for you, your employees, your employer, or your business partner. And I actually originally had family written down as well because I'll, I'll weave this in a little bit later, how I use this with my own siblings or, or family. Number two is to provide insight into the value of project management. For some of you, it's this uh, almost mythical concept um, or it's a misrepresented concept. I've been in several meetings where the first thing they'll ask is, what is project management? They've heard about it. Maybe they've even seen it executed or possibly executed poorly. That's my goal. Those are my two. So um, I'll check with uh, you at the end to see if, if we are close. All right, moving into the content. So here's what we're going to talk about. We've got uh, just a handful of slides, and uh, I, I won't move through them very quickly, so it's appropriate for you to engage with questions. Uh, both Scott and Madeline can help field those questions, and I'm more than happy to be interrupted uh, mid-sentence. That, that's not a concern at all. So as you think about it, if you're the type of personality that just needs to share it or you'll forget it, that's okay. Share it. All right, so the, the agenda will be what is project management? That will be our baseline. That's where we're going to begin. When should I use it? Um, typo. <laughs> I just typed that just briefly. So when should I use it? And uh, number three, how do I start? Right, because it's it can be a little ambiguous. What do I do? And then we'll summarize, and then we'll go into Q and A. All right, moving forward. So project management. Uh, project management is a mindset and a process of keeping things moving forward and keeping people informed. And we can ap apply that mindset to a number of things. But here are some examples. Uh, project management can be a service for those that are around you. Have any of you? Um, if you can relate, let me know. But have you ever gone to somebody and said, I need help with something? And they said, yeah, I've got it. Let me take it from here. 
and it could be any topic, right? You walk up to someone, you say, I've got something that's maybe heavy or frustrating or confusing, and I need help, and they just take it and say, I've got it for you. That's a service, right, that that person provided you. And I see this type of service used through project management day in and day out. Uh, and to give you an example of my world, uh, my team currently manages 300 different projects with a pipeline of almost, uh, almost $45 million, right? That's the amount of professional services that we're tracking. We will invest across those 300 projects almost 150,000 hours. And so it's significant. It's a lot of work. And to, for that to happen, every project, if you do the math, is going to have dozens and, and in some cases, a hundred different people involved. And each one of those individuals have the, something unique that they provide. One person will provide this component, which is a dependency for the next, and so forth. So my team, if we can provide a service to help those different individuals know when to get involved, to what level, and when they're done, it's a huge service for them. And then they can compartmentalize and move on to the next. Number two, it's, a, it's temporary, right? That's important to note. Um, PeopleSoft, there is a, um, or PeopleWare, there is a book that talks about the success of projects. And there is absolutely a, a, a point of profit. There is a point of investment and return. And then there is also a point of failure. Projects that begin to extend beyond 2,500 man hours have a 30% success rate, meaning the rest fell. The uh, initial goal has been forgotten. The people that sponsored it are gone, right? So projects by nature are designed to be temporary. They should start with specific criteria and end with specific criteria. We'll talk about that some more in a minute. Um, project management is also the method to give the right people the right information they need at the right time. When done well, right? That's really the idea is make sure that the people that need information have it when they need it. And what I find is the most successful is a cadence. So we'll talk about that near the end. Some structure that you can bring into the project so that if you have a stakeholder, a business partner, maybe you have an employee that you're working with, they know every Tuesday at a certain time or every Thursday at a certain time, there will be a call and they can bring all their questions to that call. Or maybe there will be a published update and they can capture all the information they need then. So in that number three, I was going to say, we had a question come in. I'm sorry. Please. <laughs> Thank so you. This have, is perfect. First interruption. I like it. Okay. So we have actually two from Ruben. He says, how do you hold someone accountable without actually doing it for them? Are there some steps you follow um, just to keep things moving? Yeah, really good question because that's the norm within our environment, right, Ruben? So how do we hold people accountable when they don't actually report to us? And uh, there is, in project management, there is a thing called initiation. And that will actually be in, uh, in about two more slides. One of the most important pieces that you can do in the initiation phase is to identify the roles and responsibilities of everybody that, that will be involved. You may not know the name, but you at least know the role that needs to be filled. Part of those, though, will be stakeholders. There will be people that are decision makers. There will be people that are invested into the success of this. And you want to bring those stakeholders in because they're your support team. Uh, if I unilaterally just start reaching out to people that I don't know or don't have a relationship with, or if I start reaching out and trying to hold people accountable that really don't feel accountable to my work, it's going to be tough. Right? And, and we all run into that. So if we take it from that approach and just say, hey, you need to come help me, it usually will fail. However, if in a project we start at the beginning and we say, hey, stakeholders, you know, the, the owners of these teams, or maybe that person, him, him or herself, I need you two months from now or three months from now to do these things for me, all of a the sudden they feel purpose, right? And they feel like they can be a part of something. That's, that's the goal. You want them to be, feel like they can be a part of something and know when they're going to be a part of it. And then, then you have the conversation with them. Will this work? Are you available? Can you do it? Et cetera. So I hope that answers your question, but I'd love validation and verification. So Ruben, was that close? Okay. I'll, I'll take that as a thumbs up. Okay. And All right, Madeline, other question? 
Yeah, one more some from Ruben again. And he says, and I think you'll probably get to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What do you use to keep track of, uh, what do you use to keep track and follow up on certain tasks or projects? Awesome. Really important. Tracking is probably going to be the most critical part. We reserve a few slides just for that. So let's save that question um, because you're, that's absolutely fundamental, uh, keeping things moving forward. Good question. All right. Thanks, Madeline. And keep doing what you're doing. If you got them, just jump on in. All right. So number four, uh, project management is a process of tracking the costs, including the time. Each one of us has a value and the companies that pay us, or, or even if we're self-employed, we have an hourly rate. Each one of us does, whether it's $10 or $1,000, whatever it may be, our time costs money. So I give, I give nice my time and they compensate me with money. Right. And so that's a very critical part to projects is how much time are we investing into them? Cause that is a direct correlation to cost. Uh, number five is a profession. Uh, so within my, uh, within the group that I work with and a lot of the people that I look for, I'm looking for people that have been doing this at a particular level for a, a particular amount of time. And in exchange, you know, we'll pay a pretty good salary. So it's a profession. I, I, often in my interviews will ask if you could do anything different, what would you change? And this, this question could be with a 55 year old man, or it could be a 25 year old gal who just graduated from college. It's almost, almost always the same. The question when I ask and the answer will be, I wish I had started this a little bit earlier. I wish I had gotten into project management earlier. And, uh, and because it, it is a, a valid profession, and there are people all across the state of Utah that are doing this uh, as their career. And so with that, there is some structure. So at the bottom, you'll see PMI or the Project Management Institute. It is the leading association in the field of project management. There are certificates that are associated with it. Uh, in particular, the PMP, the Project Management Professional Certification, that is valid globally. So I could hire somebody in Europe today or the Philippines. I just interviewed somebody from India yesterday, um, and and I'm looking for the PMP. So it's a global certification that's accepted around the world. Okay, moving to the second part of what is project management. Here is a common sequence of events, and the reason I'm sharing this with you is just so you can see that there is some logic behind it. It may be familiar to many of you. It might even be second nature to a lot of you. But I wanted to share this so that you can see what the PMI, as an example, uh, publishes. Um, so in this, what is project management? It's still a mindset and a process of keeping things moving forward and keeping people informed. The approach that I'm sharing with you today is called waterfall. There are other methods that you may have heard of that are like agile and so forth. But the one that I'm particularly fond of is waterfall. And it, it is just as you would visualize. You start off at the top of the waterfall, everything gathers at the top, and then it descends and crosses over and is put into motion as it descends. That's what this is. So we start off at the very beginning with initiation. So to Ruben's question earlier, in initiation, as I'm building my charter, I'm identifying with this charter, who are the key people that I need to keep involved? Some I'm going to keep at an inform level, some I'm going to keep at a decision-making level, some I'm going to keep at an executing level, right? There are different levels of involvement. And as I move through, through initiation, I have to complete this stage before I can move on to the next because they are dependent upon one another. As I move into the planning, this is where I'm gathering my team. Uh, what would be very normal in this phase is let's say there's a new initiative that you've been asked to be a part of, you would then identify everybody that will touch this initiative and you'll bring them together on a call and you're going to say, here's what we're doing. Let's plan it out together. And as you plan, you put your scope, which could be your success criteria, uh, the work breakdown structure uh, that may be overly complex for the purposes of this call, but a work breakdown structure is essentially what needs to happen first, second, third, etc., And who owns that? And how long will each of those take? And then you have this trickle down that leaves you with the end date. And then you know when you're going to be done. After you've completed the planning, you move into execution. 
that's where he turns the wrench and you're actively working. Maybe you're, uh, and oftentimes I should have mentioned this earlier. I will emphasize spending a majority of our time here because whatever we fail to plan, uh, we've already planned to fail, right? You guys have heard that, that phrase. So it, what we miss here is going to catch up to us later down here. And it's often going to be a lot more difficult because it's going to take two or three weeks for something or four months for something. And had we planned it upstream and put it in motion here, it would already be available in execution. So that's why I emphasize the need to, in, in the initiation and planning, to spend a majority of your time there. Gather people, gather information, and move forward. As you move into the execution phase, here's where people are going to want updates. They're no longer involved. Uh, you know, maybe you've got your stakeholders that really just are on the periphery and have even forgotten about this initiative entirely. And so in the execution phase, that's where your role comes in to keep them informed. You're going to send some type of a regular message. You're going to have some type of a regular call that people can count on. And you're going to keep them informed on what's happening and all of the different people that come in and help get things done. And maybe it's just you, right? Maybe you're the one that's executing on the, uh, on the initiative and you own it, but you still want to keep other people involved and informed because at some point you may need their help. Then when it's been done, the work's complete, you move into a control phase. And that's where you're just tracking to see if it really met the goal. Is this what we expected? Is the success criteria being met? Right? That's what you're doing in closure. You're following up with maybe, maybe your boss and say, hey, did we do it? Is it done? Yeah, it is. Or, I, what a good feeling when you know something's actually wrapped up. Because when things linger and, and they draw on and you're, you're just wondering in the back of your mind, is this still important or not, uh, that takes energy and that takes time and focus away from other things that you could be doing. So it's very important in this control phase to wrap things up and let people know, you know, give thanks, recognize, and move on. And then you go into your closure. Closure is just a final document. You can do whatever you want with it. But what would be very common here is to promote your success, promote your team's success. Pat yourself on the back. Send a little kudo to somebody, right? That's what closure looks like. So this is project management. And before I move into the next uh, stage of, of the presentation, are there any questions yet uh, or any more questions on what is project management? Not seeing any questions, David. There was a comment from Jacqueline uh, Russell. She says, I wish more industries acknowledge the value of the PMP. Yeah, good. Yeah, good point. I think that will continue to grow. Thanks, Jacqueline. Okay, moving into when should I use project management? Um, here are a couple of identifiers because it doesn't need uh, to be used all of the time. One of them would be how long is it going to take? Um, so if you have something that you can get done in the next two or three hours, it's probably not a good idea to add this layer of project management to it because you can start and you can finish and you're done and you just say, hey, done, right? That, so project management may not apply to things like that. However, if there is something that's going to be extended out over time, and other people are going to start to come in, then you want to use project management. So here are some ideas. Um, and what I ask of each of you is that as I read through them, please read through them with me and think for a moment if it applies to you. Because the idea around this session is to, is to make that personal, associ personal association with the things that you do today. And if you do that, if we can do that, then it will have more value and it actually makes a difference tomorrow. So here are the five things where uh, project, management, project management might help. One, prioritizing what's the most important for me, my team, or my company. What that could look like is if you have 10 different things, many of you have more, um, and you're not sure which one is the most important. If that applies to you, then keep this in mind. Project management might be a good fit so that you can prioritize what you need to focus on. Number two, is there something we need to prepare for? You know it's coming. Maybe you're getting some funding. Maybe you're getting a new client. Maybe you are expanding. Maybe you're moving to a work from home environment. Right? Something that you need to prepare for. Uh, maybe you see a need within your team or your company, and that's something you want to prepare for. 
then project management might be a good fit, and I'll talk about why in a minute. Next, helping others focus on getting things done. So if there is just intermittent touches and nothing's really moving forward, then yeah, project management would probably be a good fit for that situation. All right, number four, keeping community members, business partners, or executives informed. If your day is rather noisy because people are asking information from you and they're looking for statuses, they're looking for updates, you may want to consider using project management principles to help decrease the noise. Uh, none of us like working in a noisy environment, but only you can decide whether it's noisy for you or not. And if it is, you may want to consider project management. And the last one is trying to save money. I personally, uh, my wife and I do use a form of project management to manage our funds. It's very predictable. It's, it's regular, right? We meet every Sunday and we do it together. And, and so I'm just saying that it can go beyond professional use into personal use, but it has a huge value. Uh, project management has a significant contr contribution to reducing cost because what's tracked is also what can be managed. So that's another one. All right, so I'm going to take a second and stop. I'm going to leave this up, uh, give you, uh, you know, at least 10 to 15 awkward seconds of silence to write down something for you, um, something where this can help you. So write down something that's specific and unique in your world that will fit this. I actually enjoy silence, so I could I could let this go for a long time. Uh, but hopefully you had a chance to write something down. This item that you wrote down, my personal request of you is that you don't forget that you wrote this down. Come back to it this afternoon before you leave the office. Revisit it tomorrow and leverage that item that you wrote down to apply project management to it and, and give it a shot. All right, moving on to the next slide and doing a quick time check, so we're 30 minutes in. Moving to the next slide, how do I start? So building off of what we just did, what I'd like to ask is that, that we go through this together. Um, by selecting your top priority initiative and assess where you're at in that project cycle. So take a moment, think about maybe an initiative or a project that you're working on or a task that you've been given. And it's an important one. Try to focus on the most important one and determine, are you in the initiation phase? Is it just a concept? Are you in the planning phase, meaning you're trying to gather information? Is this initiative in the execution phase? where you're, you're actually doing the work, you're building the web page, the publication, the, the technical documents. Um, you know, maybe you're in the middle of something already. Or are you near the end and you're trying to wrap it up, trying to determine if you met the success criteria, checking in with others to see if this was really what they were looking for or maybe what you were looking for. So determine where along that cycle you're at and then let's move into these six action items. So one, in every project you need a scope. You need success criteria. You need to know what it is that you're being asked to do or what it is that you want to do. Write that down and then at some point go verify with the stakeholders. Maybe that's your boss, an employer, or a business partner and just go verbally. Don't write it down in an email. I think there's too much that can be misunderstood. But verbally talk with the stakeholder and say, am I on track? Is this what we want to do? And if it is what you want to do, then write it down. Write it down, send an email, we're on, you know, on the same page, here's what we're doing. Two, write down the success criteria. So I, I should have differentiated between those two better. First one is the scope. What is it that we're trying to accomplish? And then two, what's the success criteria? How do we know if we won? How do we know if we did a good job? 
and then verify that with your stakeholder as well. Number three, write down who needs to be included. All the names, all the people, everyone that should either be informed or uh, would be an active participant, maybe someone you're dependent on. Brainstorm for a moment and write down everyone that should be included in that top priority initiative. Number four, take that list of participants. You're, they're now your team, if you will. Call them your team, call them whatever you want, um, and work with that team to define what needs to be done and how long that will take. Uh, that's where you get your project plan from. By listing the tasks and the durations, by putting the tasks also in order of first to last and how long they take, you then know when you're going to let somebody know about their job, right? You can give someone a weak heads up. Hey, I'm coming for you. You know, Ruben, to your point earlier, this is where that really makes a big difference. Hey, I'm coming for you, and uh, I'll bring you Tropical Smoothie, a peanut butter cup from Tropical Smoothie, just to incentivize you to get it done, um, right? You can have fun with it, but give them a heads up because now you know who needs to do what and when. Put dates and owners to each task, and by letting the participants tell you these dates, they now have some ownership in it. And understandably, some people are going to be more accountable than others, but this is a great start for everybody. If you came to me and said, hey, David, how long is it going to take for you to present? And I said, it's going to take me an hour. Now it's my job, and I feel invested in you know, only taking one hour to present. Um, and then move on to number six decide how to track. I love it when we collaborate on this with the, the team. You can go with a standard template and say, hey, I'm going to send out a daily update because it's that critical, or I'm going to send out a weekly update because um, you know, it, it's going to take a long time. We can pace ourselves. We're in a marathon and not a sprint. And so from that, you can also decide, am I going to send out a weekly written update, which I would highly recommend that people can go back to? Are we going to have a weekly phone call? Again, you may want to do that as well. And so that's how you start. That's how you move from chaos to organization and structure. And it does take writing things down. Um, I use a couple of different tools to help me track this. For personal use, I use a notepad. I'm a big proponent of you know, just good old-fashioned binders. And uh, I use this all the time for my personal stuff. But for work, I use OneNote, and it's a common tool that everyone else in the company uses, and it's Microsoft's digital journal. I can share specific pages, if you will. Uh, I can collaborate with others. I can track tasks. I can make assignments. So that's what I use for work, OneNote, and that's how I track things. So moving down to the tools. Um, the tools. Uh, this is extremely broad, and uh, I'll share with you a, a little story. So we, uh, years ago, invested into an inventory management system, and uh, that's because we were a hardware company. So we would, you know, we would purchase servers, we would purchase different you know, components, and then we would move them from our vendor to our customer. And so we had this vendor management system. And we decided we want to turn, the, turn that into a project management tool. And that was a horrible fit. It didn't work. But it was what we had. And so we used that vendor management tool to import all of the services, to import all of the product costs, to list out all of the different products that they bought, to try and manage resources. You know, it, just, it really fell apart. and It didn't work well. And then we moved into another application um, that was based on the CompuWare change point, very robust, very dynamic. Um, and then we, got, we began to build a project management application. And, uh, and that's what we use today, and it's been phenomenal. Uh, it it manage, manages a tremendous amount of information, but what it lacks is executive visibility. So it still requires you know, databases and data marts on the back end for reporting. Um, so there's that end of the spectrum. You know, there's Oracle-based capabilities uh, that you may want to see in enterprise organizations. 
but then you have something that's far more simple, like uh, what I use at home. I use Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. That's what I use at home to track the things that we're doing. Um, as a mountain bike coach, I have a, a spreadsheet that tracks all of the different things that we're going to do this season and who owns them and the due dates. So those are the two extremes, right? But either way you want to track. And so I want to share with you a couple of those tools. Uh, before we move into those tools though, are there any questions or comments around how to start or any questions around you know, things that, that you may have on your mind? I'm not seeing any questions, David, not right now. Good. Well, I think no news is good news, but that's okay. If, if we do get news, we'll, we'll move over to it. Okay. Asana. So who here has used Asana? Raise a hand or um, good. So if I'm looking over here, I'm looking at you. And if I'm looking over here, I'm looking at my presentation. So good. It looked like there were probably half a dozen hands that went up. So I'm not going to spend too much time teaching on how it works. But for those of you that haven't used it before, I want you to be aware that it's an option. That's all. And I'll share a few other options with you as well. And the intent behind this is just so that you recognize that there are, there are really good tools out there that will help make your life easier. Asana is one of them. So it's a web-based tool that allows for collaboration without email. So within the application, you can assign, you can comment, you can tag. And so as long as everybody in the team is using Asana, it's fantastic. Um, it allows for recurring tasks and calendar sync. So it'll pull over what you have from Outlook or Google, dumps it into one spot, or vice versa. And it allows for those recurring tasks like maybe your monthly meetings or weekly meetings or uh, you know, anything that you may set up that you need to manage and track. Here are some things that it doesn't do very well. It cannot assign multiple people to a task. And if that's not something that you need, fantastic. But if you're a little more robust and let's say you've got 10 different collaborators on something, it would not be the right tool for you. And, in, and the second thing that it that seems to struggle with is the UI can be a little bit slow. So if you're used to having something that's just very quick, and sometimes I've, I've seen that it is actually very responsive, but sometimes it can also get very sluggish. And so those are the pros and cons to Asana. I added a little picture here so that you can see the beautiful colors and the beautiful faces. Um, it's interactive, and I think that was the idea behind it, and that, that makes it very nice. Moving to... Oh, sorry, David. I was just going to jump in. Um, there was a comment from uh, Spencer Douglas. He says that Asana looks a lot like MS Teams. Very much so. Yeah, very good point. Um, and I, I'm going to do a little plug for MS Teams uh, while we're on the subject. I use that now probably more than any other application, more than Outlook, more than it is a deep collaborating tool. So if you're a Microsoft shop, invest into teams. Absolutely useful. Um, my first meeting was at 6 a.m. this morning and that's what we were using. We had a group of 15 of us collaborating and uh, in that we used teams for the video session just like what we're doing in Zoom. We also had a side panel to collaborate on comments and documents and uh, it was all captured right there. So um, everyone can go back and see what our notes were. You can record the sessions. It's very it's quite impressive. All right, so moving to the next one, Trello. So Trello, um, you'll see very similar uh, kind of this look and feel, colors, comments. It has uh, cards, and uh, those cards help track different initiatives. They can be moved around and prioritized. Um, so the two things that it does well, it's got visual progress, which is easy to navigate. So you can quickly determine if you're ahead or behind schedule. Uh, it also allows for simple access with good task management. So it's easy to get into, it's easy to see what's yours, it's easy to, to you know, complete what's yours, it's also easy to make assignments, and uh, so it does that, that well. Um, however, you can see the things that it doesn't do well, one of them is that it can be quite of crowded and cluttered. So if you were to triple the uh, amount of activity in Trello, you'll see that it, it actually gets very cluttered very quickly. 
And so having that dashboard feel or that dashboard view starts to, to fall apart a little bit. And then there is no real high level overview, which uh, may not be that necessary for some, but it is very necessary for others. And what I've often found is in project management, the number one thing that I can do in my level is keep the executives informed. And uh, if I don't know what's going on because there isn't an overview of the project, then I have to go ask the project managers. I have to go ask my program managers or my engineers what's going on, what's the status. And so having an overview of a project, at least for me at my level, is extremely important. Um, but it may not be important for your, your uh, use case. All right, moving to number three. Number three is Basecamp. Um, should have asked this with Trello. Who here on the call has, is using or has used Basecamp? Got one, two. Okay, not as many. Um, Basecamp, one thing that I've been impressed with on Basecamp um, is the way that it captures a lot of different information. Uh, so it's a great tool for smaller projects. It has a message board, a chat capability, calendar capability. So it really, similar to what Microsoft Teams is doing, you have one center for information. And that one source of truth is um, it's a noise reducer, right? It's, it's, um, helps so that your inbox isn't getting jammed up. It helps so that your, your phone isn't getting bombarded with texts. There's one source of truth, and that's very helpful. And it is simple. Uh, you have a quick setup, it's a simple interface, and so you can just get right into it and go to work. Um, there are some, some uh, cons to it. The documents are a little bit tough to find, um, and sometimes it can be a little too simple, uh, leaving out some of the basic features. So evaluate it, see if it meets your needs, but uh, Basecamp for me and my personal use has actually been per quite, quite good to work with. I've enjoyed it, um, but I would not use it at work simply because it doesn't have the layering and the complexity that I would need. So those are three options that I wanted to share with you. I'm going to move into some of the other standard ones, though, um, that all of us have heard of. And w the, the main goal here is if these are too complex, maybe these are beyond what you're ready for, start with something. And today, Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, both being free, um, or something. And that's a fantastic way to at least start. And you can use that format to just list everything that you're trying to do, who owns it, and the date. And that's enough, right? That's a good start. Start with something though. Don't stay with your notepad for long. Uh, don't stay with, you know, uh, uh, Apple Notes on your phone. That, that's not an effective way to keep things moving forward. So start with something like Excel or Google Sheets if you have nothing else. That's a great place to at least start. So my, my question to you is I'm certainly just one of many, um, and with you know, I think we've got 35 plus participants. I'm interested in hearing what you use and what you've liked. And uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up the floodgates, Madeline, if, if you're ready. I'm curious just to hear other feedback. What do you guys use today and what works for you? And uh, we'll just speak up first and, and you'll get first dibs. I'm here waiting for the responses, but we are just about out of time. So probably oh. we'll wait too long. <laughs> Good catch. Well, uh, th this is Stephen. Madeline, can you hear me? Yes, yep. got you. Well, I, I'm absolutely using uh, project management right now. I've got four things in motion. And uh, I, I struggle between using Excel, uh, Google Sheets, everybody has access. Uh, I find not a lot of people are familiar with project management tools or the team gets too big so you start spending money on it. So uh, I, I've been using a lot of Google Sheets or things like that. And I just haven't, I guess, found a real rhythm to it. I always kind of have to reset. So I, I'm struggling right now. Yeah, it's a good point. And it may not be robust enough for what you need to do. Um, for those of you that don't know, this is um, Steve and I know each other. We, we go way back. And, uh, and I know that he likes to track information. So yeah, good point. Others here on the call, um, Looks like what do you use? Uh, somewhat, uh, Ashley says she used Kanban board. And Jacqueline Russell says for 
day-to-day -day and small projects, she uses Asana. John Lisenby says Git. We also use Trello and Slack to automate alert a lot of our projects. Jacqueline Russell says I also struggle getting everyone to buy in with the same software, which I think is a common issue. Um, yeah. I'm seeing Git, I'm seeing MS Teams. Um, Productive from uh, Natalie Lisenby. Wonderful. That's a good list. So good point. There are so many options out there. What I would recommend is that in the initiation phase of a project, that's when you need to make some decisions with your team on what you're going to use. And do that up front. That's a really good activity to do in the initiation and planning phase is to, is to pick your common language, your tools, um, what, what you're going to call things and where you're going to go to for information. So good. Let's move down into uh, the summary. And then I'll, I'll start to wrap up uh, shortly after this. So in summary, project management is the process of keeping things organized, keeping people informed, and tasks on schedule. That's all project management is. Don't let it become too taboo or foreign. It's really just a way to simplify life. Uh, number two, start with what you know. Start with what you have. That's always going to be the easiest way to start. And then once you get moving and gain some momentum, I think you'll find that it becomes easier than to become, you know, to move into more advanced tools or to move into more advanced forms of communication and tracking. But start with what you know. Number three, this is a service you can provide to help yourself and others feel successful. Uh, and that's exactly what happens. When someone finishes work, whether their part was very small or large, at the end, if they feel like they met the success criteria, we all feel good about it. And you as the project manager or you as the lead that's helping manage this can recognize them. And man, it goes, it just does wonders for them and for you. So it's a huge boost to the morale when, when we do project management. Uh, number four, there are tools that will make it easier. So find the one that works best for you. Mess around with two or three, but don't spend too much time testing out applications because that will become its own project all on its own, and that's not the idea. Find a tool that helps you capture and move forward with what you need to do. And then the last is project management to community. So you can connect with others and, I, and find ideas and ask for help. Uh, the, the Project Management Institute is a community of different PMs. They share ideas. There are boards. Um, and I think what you'll find is if you begin to find a few different boards out there, or even talk within your own, own organizations about how to manage information or how to manage projects, I think you'll find it's a common bond between a lot of people. And so it's okay to share what you're working through and ask for ideas so that uh, we can all become winners. All right, moving to my last little fun picture. Those who plan do better than those who do not plan, even though they rarely stick to their plan. And that's just true. It's just plain true. So if you plan, you're certainly going to do better than those who don't, even if there's change. So don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid of adapting. It's, uh, it's not set in stone. But once you start planning, you will do better than if you don't plan. So that's the, that's the presentation. Um, so I'll just end with a few comments. Thank you for sharing this time with me. I've enjoyed it. Um, as is often the case, the teacher learns more than the student. I do feel like I learned quite a bit, but I would like to ask for feedback. My goal was that you could walk away with information that will help you personally or professionally, and that you feel more informed. So let's stick with the hands up. That seemed to work before. Uh, thumbs up or thumbs down? And I think there's only a thumbs up option, so do that. It's so much easier. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thanks for your participation. Thanks for being present. Um, I hope this was helpful. Madeline and Scott, I'll turn this back over to you. No, thank you so much, uh, David. This was a great presentation. I felt like it was super interactive and I loved like working through some of those things in my mind with you. Um, one other qu uh, comment from Laurel, she also uses Airtable, so if anyone's interested in that out there. And um, to wrap things up, we'll see everyone on Thursday for a day in the life of a remote worker with Lindison Webb. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care, everyone.